we've had quite a f uh, quite a few of our customers in CabRider use uh, Vectric products for their CNC tool pathing, and so I'd like to talk a little bit about um, and show in a little more detail um, how to use Vectric software to not only tool path the uh, DXF files that that CabRider CNC creates, but um, one of the uh, cool tricks that they have is being able to apply a uh, tool pathing template based on the DXF uh, layer names, and uh, which makes tool pathing uh, multiple sheets of material uh, very quick. So before watching this video, you'll want to watch the one just before this where we talk about uh, CabRider CNC 2.0 uh, new CNC settings and capabilities. Um, in there we talk about uh, how to customize your layer names and uh, create DXF files uh, with those and, and have all your settings set up properly. So uh, this is a model we used in that video and you can see that we've we've used uh, uh, some inset construction techniques that we do talk about in another Cabrator 2.0 video and we've got a little cutout in here and so on. So um, we've customized our, we've got custom layer names that we set up here uh, we talked about in the other video that encodes all the information we didn't know to toolpath our uh, our parts. So in that uh, other video we also showed a, uh, a DXF file with the layer names. So this is our DXF file from this particular model and you can see we've got layer names with uh, the tool diameter and uh, tool um, depth and uh, tool name information in them. So let's fire up our uh, Vectric product here. I'm using uh, Cut2D Pro. And we're going to just create a new file. So I'm using pre-finished maple plywood here. So uh, that happens to be 96 and a half inches by 48 and a half inches, 3 quarters of an inch thick. And I'm going to zero off the table, which is important in this case because um, since we don't know the actual thickness of the material we'll be getting in uh, by zeroing off the table if I want to create a tongue for example that is uh, three-eighths of an inch thick um, and my material isn't a full three-quarters of an inch thick that won't matter because we're referencing from the table up three-eighths of an inch and uh, that should give us a consistent tongue thickness no matter what the thickness of the material is. Those of you who have experience with CNC will know uh, how you normally set everything up and uh, you should be able to do the same thing here. So I say okay and what I first have to do is read in uh, and port the vectors that I want to do from a file and that would be from our DXF file that we just created and uh, let me go grab those parts and uh, where's my shortcut uh, Go. All right, so I go to my DXF files and I want, in this case, I want the three quarter inch maple plywood pre finished. All right, so if we, if we zoom out here, we see that we've just got a whole bunch of parts. And I'm going to put up my tool paths tab here. So I need to select all, so we're going to do file, uh, sorry, edit, uh, select all vectors, and then I'm going to nest my objects. So uh, I've got my tool diameter that was the same diameter that I had set in CabRider of 3 eighths of an inch. I'm going to use a 0.2 inch clearance um, between vectors and a zero border gap. I'm going to allow it to rotate parts 180 degrees but not 90 degrees because I've got grain here and I don't want to screw that up. And uh, we're going to nest along the X direction and we're going to preview this. So it's going to crunch all my parts here and give me a number of sheets. All right. 
So we can see we've got a whole bunch of sheets full of a whole bunch of parts. And if we say OK here, I can look at any given sheet by just clicking on it. And if we look, let's see if I got a one that's got some large parts and small parts on it. Uh, yeah. So all of our layers are here, just like in Tab Writer. And if I turn off my pockets, I see my pocket rectangles go away down here. Um, my cyst, my uh, three quarter inch deep five millimeter holes, my half inch deep five millimeter holes, uh, my small outside profile parts, anything under 100 square inches, which is what I set in Tab Writer, and uh, my large outside profile. So all those are here. So your first uh, thing that you need to do is you have to start tool pathing based on layers. So for example, uh, let's do a drilling tool path. And uh, we got to pick our, our drill bit. So let me go down and find my drills, my drill five millimeter. Oops. Go, drill five millimeters. Say OK, and uh, oh, I'm displaying the tool database. That's not what I want. Uh, I want to pick a drilling tool path. There we go. And uh, I want to select. Now I want to select my drill five millimeter. All right, my depth. Um, this is for my, uh, I'm going to do this for my uh, construction holes that go all the way through. And we've found out on our CNC that um, if I go with the drill bit I'm using to get the point and all the spurs all the way through, I need to go 0.7812 inches down. Now here's the fun part. If I, for my selector down here, um, I'm going to select a layer. So I want my drill, my five millimeter drill bit, three quarters of an inch deep in the same drill name here. I'm going to use that layer, but I want to associate that with the tool path. So you'll see this switch to automatic because it's automatically um, anything on that layer is going to get uh, this tool path. And I'm going to call this um, construction holes. They go all the way. I know they go all the way through and they're five millimeters. And I'm going to calculate that tool path. Say OK. And you can see we've got those tool paths. And now let's say I want to do my outside uh, profile. And we're going to do this cut depth at uh, 0.76 inches because this is going to be all the way through by a little bit more. Make sure that we're all the way through. I'm using my uh, I need to, to yep, this is the bit I want to use for this. Sorry. Cancel. This is the right bit, the end mill that I want to use for this. I'm gonna do it outside right, conventional cut. Uh, I can add ramps to it if I want. Um, ramp on lead in two inches. Uh, again, I want to um, select the large outside profile layer in this particular case. Associate that with the tool path. Close. And I want to call this uh, large outside profile. And calculate that. It's warning me that I'm cutting into the table, and that's okay. So I would do this for all my, let's just do one more here. I'm going to do a pocket. And in this case, I got to look over here at my things and my pocket layer is, uh, it's using the three, uh, three eighths inch tool and I can see that it's, it's three eighths of an inch, uh, deep. I can start to see the three, seven, five here. So, um, this is going to be a pocket. I'm going to call this a pocket of uh, 0 
D for three um, three is deep. So anything on I'm going to select the layer. I'm going to use the pocket layer this time. You can see here tool is three ace, depth is three ace, and this is the tool name. Which this this is just to give me a hint that it's using a three eighths tool. Um, that's not the exact name of the tool that I use, but I know that when this is chosen, um, that this is the tool to use. If you were using software that pulled that directly out of the layer name, uh, you would want those to match. So I'm going to associate that with the tool path, close. And again, I'm going to uh, cut my pocket conventional cut. And uh, everything else is set, so I'm going to calculate that. All right, so I would do all of my um, different tool paths for all of my layers. In this case, is I'm not doing the labels layer, but one, two, three, four, five, uh, five layers. So I would get all those done, and when I'm not going to go through all of them here, but when I do that, I want to save all visible tool paths as a template. Make sure they're all checked, and I can save them as a template. And I can put them wherever I want to put my, my templates. In this case, I'm just going to put it in this folder for now. And we're going to call this, um, let's call it Cab Writer 2.0 uh, Tool Paths uh, Template and save it. All right? So now I can reload, I can load that toolpath template, and I'm going to load a different template where I've created all these already. And uh, let me go find that. So I've got a whole bunch of different templates in here, and here's my, uh, for ShopBot, my three quarter inch pre finished uh, Cabrator 2.0 toolpath template. And it's telling me that I've got something in this layer. Um, I've got a 3 eighths inch bit at a quarter inch depth layer um, that's in this template, but I don't have that layer in this particular set of vectors. And that's okay. Um, sometimes I have that layer, sometimes I don't. You can have more of them in your, um, your uh, toolpath template. And you can see that it put them all in there. Now, these three that I already had, I want to get rid of um, because uh, they're duplicates of ones I just pulled in. So I should have done this before I pulled them all in. So you can see I've got um, a variety of, and if I look in here, my small outside perimeter, the selector is picking that outside perimeter layer. So most likely, you're going to have a construction method that you use, or several of them that you use frequently, that's going to create um, pretty much a, a fixed set of, of layer name combinations. And, and over time, you can create the tool paths for those layer names and save them in the, the master template. So you can pull that template in whenever you uh, have a new project. And whichever layer names match, um, you'll have the tool paths already done. So I could uh, now I could go open this and I could calculate this tool path and I could open this and calculate this tool path and so on down the line. The problem is I'm only doing it for this one sheet. I would have to go and then select the next sheet and calculate the tool path manually for each one of them. That takes a long time. A more much faster method. I'm going to delete all these. A much faster method is they supply you with something called a gadget. So a gadget is just something that uh, is more like a script that'll that'll do things for you. And they have a cool one called Apply Template to All Sheets. So if I open that up, so I got I don't know how many sheets here. I've got uh, I don't know nine or ten of them. And what it says is select my template. And actually, the one we're just playing with is already selected. Shopbot, three-quarter inch pre-finished tool, 
2.0 toolpath template. Then you choose your post processor, whatever machine you're using. I'm using a ShopBot, and uh, I have a special post processor that I use. And then you give it your output folder. So uh, it's going into this folder called Workbench Cabinet. So we'll just let it go in there for now. Oh, actually, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it uh, put it in this testing folder so I don't screw anything up. All right. When I hit OK, it's going through and it's saying, "Oh, there's missing layers. That's OK." Now it's going through sheet by sheet and saying there's missing layers on that sheet and it's warning me that I'm going to cut through on certain so I got I got to hit okay for each of these or I could have I could have removed that um, that pocket layer that was causing me this issue before I even started but I went through each sheet and what it gave me a summary and it said that uh, on sheet 1 Calculated the system holes, construction holes in this pocket, okay, but it failed on this one. That's because there was no layer. It failed on small parts because there was no small parts on sheet one. There was large parts, and then it saved it as called called it sheet one. Sheet two, all the way through. So you can see that there's certain layers. You might want to double check that this all makes sense. Um, like sheet eight, they have apparently no pockets, so we could go look at that. Sheet 8. Uh, it'll let me get to sheet 8. Here we go. Uh, sheet 8. Zoom in. Indeed, there are no pockets on that sheet. So that all makes sense. You can see over here all the tool paths it created. And if we go look at our hard disk under projects, testing, we can see all these sheets. So 11 sheets were created almost instantaneously with all the tool paths based on the layer names where we encoded all that information way back in the, in the cab writer um, settings. And then uh, over time, I've created these um, tool path templates that I can save off um, based on the construction methods that I use. So if I have another project in the future where I um, use a slightly different construction method, maybe a different tongue, tongue thickness or something, um, <clears throat> I would have to create another toolpath for that and add it to my template. And all I would do is I could delete all of these. I could load that toolpath. And when I load that in, if I had another layer here that wasn't covered, I could uh, create a toolpath for it, whatever it may be, up here, and then resave that all the selected toolpaths with the new one in there under the same name or a different name, and uh, I could use that in the future. So a very quick method of, of toolpathing based on layer name uh, using the Vectric products. And uh, you can see that, um, let's see, if we look at my tool paths, when I load these in, oops, if I load it, you can see I've got one for half inch pre-finished, uh, three quarter inch pre-finished, I've got some older ones, I've got ones for uh, BSE. Um, so you can create as many of these toolpath templates as you need based on the type of machine you're using and uh, the layer names that you commonly run across. All right, so that's it.